Monica Foods. Mahmoud Abumayale spends most of his days right here. Come on over. Behind this counter. I might have to give you a new SIM card, but I'm checking for you. He spends hours with customers, fixing cell phones, transferring money. You the withdrawal? How much? And just making sure his family business stays in order. What's up, Tom? Work in this store is all he's ever known. I used to come with my dad to work when I was like 10 and just hang out. By 12, I was holding my own shift and working. I think from the age of like 14 to 17, I was a deli or a cook in our deli. This is actually a picture of my three other brothers and my dad. Cup Foods, short for Chicago Unbeatable Prices, has been a fixture on the corner of 38th and Chicago in South Minneapolis for more than 30 years. A lot of people come in and, and get their things done all at one time. We offer a lot of things for people to not have to go to other stores and make multiple errands. But these days, business is anything but usual. So now because of the streets being closed, it's really slow during the day. But right before the Floyd incident, at this time, it beat about 10 people in here, three other employees working with me. It was around 8 o'clock, May 25th, 2020. George Floyd walked into this cup foods. He asked for a pack of cigarettes. The store says he paid with a fake $20 bill. What happened next would set off a chain of events that sparked a global movement for justice. Both hands. I got a phone call from my employee and my employee said, hey, hey, they're killing him. I got a little confused and concerned. I said, who are you talking about? She said, hey, hey, they're killing him. So I told her to call the police on the police. But Mahmoud didn't immediately learn about the magnitude of what happened. At first, I didn't realize that that George Floyd died until the next morning, which was shocking. You know, calling the police shouldn't shouldn't equate to a death threat or a death sentence to someone because of any crime, let alone a nonviolent crime. While counterfeit money was not a common problem at Cup Foods, store protocol required employees to run bills through this machine. It's simple, you put the bill in there. And then alert police if the money was fake. He may have not known that it was a counterfeit bill. That night, employees said Floyd, who was a familiar customer at the store, was upset when confronted and refused to return the items. The police were called after he left the establishment. That's a, a main point that should be clarified. They were called after he left. And right outside the store, just minutes later, customers and bystanders gathered horrified as Minneapolis police officers restrained Floyd on the ground for nearly nine minutes. We're done. We're done. Breathe right there, bro. Okay. Uh, you don't think that what it is? His death in police custody set off weeks of protest and unrest over racism in policing. We had to close just because of how many people were upset, rightfully so. And not everybody was upset with us, but a lot of them were, and that was a threat to our employees and eminent, and we just decided to close. The store stayed closed for two weeks and tried to reopen, but the community wasn't ready. A lot of people said they were going to burn the store down. Regular patrons stood outside overnight and just protected our business and protected the whole community. What do you say to those who believe that but for your store calling 911 that night, George Floyd would still be alive? We can only pray for him. A couple of months later, Mahmoud reopened again and has remained so for months. Despite the streets being closed to traffic by giant blockades patrolled by groups and residents in what has become a sprawling stronghold of protest in Floyd's honor. We met George Floyd's family. And they were very um, accepting and, and, and we kind of asked them how they felt about us opening and they were very pro for it. For the most part, our community was very supportive of us, but there was a few random people that were just always trying to start trouble and, and put the blame on us. That blame, according to Mahmoud and the store spokesperson Jamar Nelson, should be redirected. Cup realizes that the call um, to the police brought them out here, but we won't share the responsibility of the death of George Floyd. That is at the hands of a rogue officer. Calls for justice persist here at 38th in Chicago. And while the world outside his store has changed, the owner of Cup Food says his business is still vital to the community. We don't plan on going anywhere. It's not the same, but it's getting better. 
police calls now are not going to be taken unless there's an actual violent crime taking place. While there is still a long road to justice and healing in the neighborhood, Mahmoud remains steadfast. Being um, true to your uh, customers and, and just being there for them and, and truly helping out those that are in need. Yeah, I can't imagine how you can blame the store for anything here. I mean, unbelievable. And they're, they're going to play a role in this whole trial, too, because the jury's got to hear the whole story. Let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter. Powerful stuff. Thanks so much, Chanley. Um, one thing stood out to me was the call the police on the police. What, what was, what, was there some sort of history here? What can you tell us? Yeah, I did ask Mahmoud specifically about that because that stood out to me as well when his employee called him that evening, said they're killing him, they're killing him. Mahmoud's first reaction was to say, call the police on the police and record the incident. Now, before this, Mahmoud had told me that it's a pretty safe area there. It's a diverse neighborhood, not a lot of issues pre-Floyd. And so I wanted to know why was this instinctual for him? And he explained to me, let's listen. There was an incident here in the past about five, seven years ago where there was a there was a, a cop that was harassing customers and and harassing people that had nothing to do with the crime and the and the and the issues that were taking place and eventually he got in trouble because somebody called the police on him. Vinny, this is a store with a 31-year history right there on the corner. So as you can imagine, issues have risen there over the years. Mahmoud says most of the crime that was in the area was there before Cut Foods even set up shop on the corner of 38th and Chicago. Some point to what they call a controversial history for the store that there was alleged illegal activity or under, under the table activity. I asked Mahmoud about that. He says that's just a part of being in the community for so long as they have been and that any issue was related to a license issue. But I was there all day and being inside Cup Foods, I was very comfortable. It's really one of those places, Vinny, where you walk in, everyone knows everyone's name, especially at lunchtime, it becomes very busy because the deli is quite good. And you can just feel that it is a community store. You drive past homes and in a neighborhood, and all of a sudden you come to the corner of 38th in Chicago and there's Cup Foods and then what used to be a gas station across the street. Um, how about the teenage employee who called police? Uh, he's going to have to be a witness, I would think, at the trial. What, if anything, did he tell you about that uh, teenager? Mahmoud and Jamar told me that that evening of Memorial Day, there were a lot of younger employees working at Cub Foods. In fact, he told me that before George Floyd entered the store, uh, his associate, the person, the man that was in the car with George Floyd that we see in body cam video, entered Cup Foods first and tried to pay with a pack, pay with a fake twenty dollar bill for a pack of cigarettes. But it was a different clerk who immediately noticed that the bill was counterfeit and sent him back outside. The guy left without incident, and then a few minutes later, Floyd walks in, asks for a pack of cigarettes with a fake $20 bill. It was a different clerk. This was a teenage clerk who was new to the country from West Africa. Let's listen to Mahmoud and Jamar explain. He was just following protocol. Um, I wish, um, you know, maybe he wouldn't have called the police, but that's our protocol. He's been traumatized from the incident. It's, uh, you know, we have been working hard with him to get him the help that he needs and to be supportive of him because this was traumatic for him. You know, he's uh, uh, not from this country and he was uh, freshly here. And so since the incident, months. not even six months, and since yeah. the incident has been traumatized, greatly traumatized by it because he realized, uh, he, he, in, in fact, his life was threatened um, on top of the store and Mike's life and th those folks threatened. And so um, he's, he's taken the brunt of the world on his shoulders at such a young age and realizing that um, uh, what has happened was um, uh, due to a police call that emanated from here, which I think a lot of people is taking their eye off the prize. Vinny, it's truly been a nightmare, not only for that clerk who called the police, but for everyone that's worked there. Mahmoud has received threats to his life. In fact, working there that night was Mahmoud's nephew who tried to go outside and intervene. you got to watch this. Let's listen. Um... He tried to tell the officer to stop what he was doing, that he was going above 
and beyond. And it seemed like anybody that was trying to interfere was getting it pushed back, pushed back, yeah. and, and and told to stay out of it. And and luckily that there were people recording to see what what took place. He actually got pushed, if I recall. Yeah, he got pushed by one of the officers yes. when he tried to approach. He did approach over the curb. Yeah. Although he was young, 15 years old, it didn't take an adult to realize that there was a murder taking place. Since Floyd's death, Mamu tells me that they've made changes there at Cup Foods. They only call police for violent offenses, and they've been policing a lot of their own things just there within the store, and that if an employee feels the need that police should intervene, that a manager will be the one that calls. Yeah, I, I don't understand how anyone blames the store or blames this teenager, or blames the clerk. To me, it's kind of outrageous. I mean, how, how serious were, was the level of threats that they've received? It was serious, Vinny. I am impressed that they still open back up and are at work every day. Of course, they take precautions, but there was one point where Mamu took me behind the counter and pulled out a huge envelope of letters he's received from all over the world, and not all of them were nice. He told me about receiving threats to himself, his family, the store, his employees, and but yet he's seen a lot of support as well. Let's listen to him read one of those letters. About how many of these have you received? Say about 100. This one was on June 8th, 2020. Hello, Mr. Bumayali. I do not know you, but because I've been staying away from the local demonstrations in Albuquerque due to my being in the COVID-19 high-risk category, I need to do something to contribute. I am enclosing a check for $200. I want the money to help George Floyd's family in any way you see fit. It's used is entirely up to you. Thank you very much in helping me help George Floyd's family. Always in peace, David Lopez. Really good support from people that never been in here before. Um, on top of the support we got from the people that have been coming in from our community, it's good to see people from all across the country, you know, be in solidarity with our cause and with what took place and with the justice that, um, the injustice that happened to George Floyd and his family. Not all of them are nice. That's okay. Some were very rude or threatening or some were very uh, inappropriate, but again, we just overlooked those because the good outweighs the bad. So Mahmoud, he's received contributions from all over the world, like he read there. Vinny, he put that into a fund and made a very generous contribution to George Floyd's family at one point. And again, in the hours I spent there, I learned a lot more. In the basement of Cut Foods, this is just another example of how they serve their community. There is a fully operational mosque where they hold Muslim prayer every Friday. They've done this for years. This is a, a mosque dedicated to his mother. So him and, him and his brothers will every Friday welcome local Muslims to have prayer. They do it every week there in the room. Also in the store, everywhere you look in Cup Foods, there's photos on the wall. Well, there's one billboard where Mahmoud pointed out uh, he, some obituaries of customers who have been coming to the store for years. And when they pass away, they honor them by putting a photo of their obituary behind the counter where you check out there. And he was pointing out customers that he knew that would come to the store, all different ages. There was another part of the store where he had pictures of customers as babies. He said, this baby's now 25 years old because it's a, a community store where people grow up there, they hang out, uh, there's a place to play video games. It's just been a staple, real mainstay there on the corner. And even with what's happened, they hope to continue serving the community any way they can and really hopefully lead the healing process now. I'll tell you what, every neighborhood needs a place like that. Chanley Painter, great insight. Thank you so much. Thanks, Vinny.